Israel launches that attack and the territory of the state expands dramatically, then Israel can export the Palestinian population out very easily. <coughs> At the same time that this is happening, the U.S. economy will collapse. The U.S. dollar will collapse. We already see the signs. If we have the time, sometime I'll deliver a lecture on Islam and the international monetary system. And this will explain to you why paper money is going to disappear. And when paper money disappears, what's going to be money? Huh? Plastic. <laughs> Plastic. No, this is not a credit card, eh? This is a debit card. Plastic with money. And when all your money is in the bank, there is no money to carry home and say to your wife, put it away. No, because all the money is in the bank. Then they can seize your money any time they want. Do you know what, what happened in Argentina two weeks ago while the scholars of Islam were eating halwa? The government of Argentina froze all bank accounts. So some people didn't have money to even buy roti chanai. Can I even buy titanic? No money. Governments can do that. They can freeze all your money. They can say such and such a person is a terrorist. No evidence of course, but he's a terrorist. Freeze his account. Seize his money. You don't have any money in your pockets. The reason why we are here with this perilous state now before us is because we abandoned Muhammad He gave us real money and we abandoned the real money and we took the paper money and we paid the price for it. When the U.S. economy collapses and the U.S. dollar collapses and the state of Israel expands dramatically and the state of Israel defies the President of the United States who says, withdraw. Israel does not withdraw. So the President says a second time, withdraw. Israel does not withdraw. President, uh, would you please withdraw? <laughs> Israel does not withdraw. So the President, I understand why Israel is not withdrawing. <laughs> And then Israel is able to define the Security Council of the United Nations, which adopts a resolution. We want to send a fact-finding mission to Jenin. Israel says, no, you're not going to do that. What does the Security Council do? Back down. Israel now becomes the ruling state in the world. Because no one can impose their will on the state of Israel. When the Dajjal achieves that, and that is around the corner, of course the foreign ministries are all going to be surprised, and the universities are all going to be surprised, but you and I who have studied Surah to Kathy, we will not be surprised, no. When Israel becomes the ruling state in the world, then Israel will rule the world for how long? A day which is as long as a week. How long will that be? Maybe 20 years, 30 years, I don't know. At the end of that period of time, then the Jal will now be in a day which is like our day. And therefore he will be in our dimension of time, which is around the corner, maybe over 40 years, 50 years from now. At that time the water in the Sea of Galilee would have dried up. How long would it take for that water to dry up? That's how long it will take for the Dajjal to appear as a human being, as a Jew, as a young man, powerfully built with curly hair. Notice I'm saying nothing about his eyes. That will come in the lecture on Islamic spirituality, which is at Lorang K. Hmm? Islamic spirituality. Dajjal will now rule the world from Jerusalem. He has fulfilled his mission of impersonating the Messiah. So he can rub his hands, it is a mission accomplished. It is at that time that the Imam al Mahdi will emerge that we spoke about last night. And then the Jah will attack the Imam. 
because the Imam has succeeded in restoring Darul Islam to the Arabian Peninsula. The state of Saudi Arabia is now in the garbage bin from where it came in the first place. And Islam has re-emerged in its cradle. Darul Islam in Arabia. This is the greatest and the most potent threat of all to the state of Israel. And that's coming. That's coming. And so Dajjal has to respond. He has to attack the Imam al-Mahdi. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, he pointed his hand, his hand 20 times to the east. He said, it's from the east that he will attack. And yesterday we told you how he will attack. He will be riding on a donkey. The donkey will have his hair stretched out wide. The donkey will travel as fast as the clouds. And I told you, I, I visited Hong Kong last week on that donkey. Hmm? And so we're talking about fighter aircraft. The state of Israel is going to be attacking using fighter aircraft, but will be attacking from the east. So it is Dahran we're talking about. What used to be the Saudi Air Force Base in Dahran, and now it's the American Air Force Base in Dahran. The attack comes from the east. The angels will guard Makkah and Medina. And Sunni Muslim tells us that the attack is going to be diverted to Damascus. And then comes the confrontation that we described last night. We don't have to repeat it again. Imam al-Mahdi is inside the masjid and Dajjal is outside, followed by 70,000 Jews from Isfahan, wearing their Jewish shawls, indicating that power in Israel has now shifted from the European Jew, who is not a Jew, he's a European dressed up in the clothes of a Jew. Power has now shifted from him to Banu Israel. And we said to you last night that that process of change of power has already started in Israel. While the scholars of Islam have been eating halwa, of course. Because the new president of Israel, the one who defeated Shimon Peres for the post of president, is an Iranian Jew, not a European Jew, for the first time in the history of the state. Banu Israel are now taking over. Imam is inside and Dajjal is outside. And at that moment the son of Mary comes down. The water in the Sea of Galilee is now dry. I am saying to you that that event is approximately 50 years away from now. The Imam says, here he is, this is the son of Mary. And so history repeats itself. Because once before it happened, when John the Baptist, Yahya alayhi salam, said, here he is, this is the man you've been waiting for, this is the Messiah. And then the true Messiah comes out and confronts the false Messiah. The false Messiah flees and the true Messiah pursues him and overtakes him at Lod, which is the headquarters of the Israeli Air Force. And then the true Messiah kills the false Messiah. So all the planes are now grounded. They no longer have control over the sky. The source of their power is that they control the sky. The sky is no longer belong to them. The jar is now destroyed. Now comes the end of Gog and Magog, which we could not deal with last night. The solitary hadith is in Sunni Muslim. The solitary hadith declares that it is now that Gog and Magog are released. And the first of them will pass by the Sea of Galilee and start to drink the water. And by the time the last of them pass, they will say there used to be water there. And the world of scholars of Islam have held on to this solitary hadith. And so the world of Islamic scholarship is insisting that they, the world cannot experience Gog and Magog until the son of Mary has come back. Impossible. Double it. But they have disregarded in a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, which we have recorded in this book for them. 
they're going to have to respond to this book. Secondly, they have recorded, they have disregarded something else. The Jews are back in the Holy Land. The Quran declares that it explains all things. And therefore the Quran must explain the return of the Jews to the Holy Land. What is that explanation? Come on, stop eating halwa and give me the explanation. They don't have it. They have disregarded a third thing. Some 50 years.